Hey folks, welcome back. How's everybody doing today? Uh, it's a beautiful Sunday morning out here where I'm at, and I'm hoping you all are having a great day. Hopefully you got some packs charging, because the weather's starting to turn for everybody, and uh, man, some people have been cooped up for way too long. <laughs> flying whoops is all, all good, but man, you got to get out and do some flying. Anyways, welcome back. Uh, took last couple weeks off, was out visiting family up in Chicago. Um, tried doing a stream from the car once before, and that doesn't work out well, so just figured we'll just push it on to the next week. Thanks for everybody coming out. This is obviously, as usual, powered by coffee. Because without coffee, I am a very angry person. <laughs> <clears throat> So like I said, took the last two weeks off. We're going to be doing some giveaways today. We've got the uh, Flywoo Baby Nano uh, 1S quad giveaway. If you don't know where the link is for that, figure it out. I'm not telling you. But thank you, everybody who came out so early today. Lawbart, as usual, always in this, the uh, the comments section. Thank you for coming out today. Steady at AFPV. There's some other names that are cut off by this, this stupid bar up here that I can't see past. Like right here. Whoever you are, thank you. I think Morton Upshot was one of them, and maybe Rick Zepeda. Well, you're right there, but uh, YouTube doing doing good work today, I see. Rick Zepeda, how you doing this morning? Kevin Otto, thank you for coming out. Mike Bergman, hey, fiends, how you doing? Borked, thank you for being here. Athix, as always, thank you for coming out today. Uh, nobody but somebody. Uh, that's a new name. Thanks for coming out. I haven't seen that before. Keith Drones, as always from Rhode Island. Hopefully things are thawing out for you and you can get out and do, go do some flying. Uh, Barry Cook, how you doing this morning? Brandon Baked Beans, one of the uh, one of the good folk out there. Super helpful. Uh, and I gotta say, Brandon Baked Beans has been doing some long range edits and I made a comment once uh, many, many, many moons ago that I thought long range edits were, in general, just plain boring. And why, why you no focus? There we go just plain boring and uh he took that as a challenge and successful <laughs> he's been dropping some freaking killer long range edits uh really good man really good uh morton Upshot still says still new to the hobby finding out how much better a decent camera is compared to the uh the not bad ant no the ant's bad the ant is bad by uh, camera standards right now it's still usable but it's i don't ever recommend ant ant is uh form over function if you need a camera that that is that small then uh i guess the ant is your choice nobody but somebody says it's sunday evening here where i'm at I'm about to eat with my family we'll turn this off go enjoy time with your family i uh strongly encourage that but hey if you want to keep listening i'm not going to stop you <laughs> Uh, Brandon McBean says, uh, I'm doing whoops and toothpicks today because at home with the kids, can't escape on my own at all. Gonna take the kids to the playground though. Lunchtime. Yeah. Taking the kids to the playground is a great excuse to do some, uh, some whoop time. Old yellow Dan. How you doing today, man? Nice to see you. Miss you at work. Uh, whoops, the playground going up tubes and slides is the best. Yeah. Uh, playground i used to take my daughter to they it, it was you know down here where i'm at you were just getting freaking scorched in the sun they put up these sail shades and in the sail shade there was about a like a six inch diameter hole like where they all met up that was that was prime uh gap shooting <laughs> i thought you'd get a laugh out of that uh, by the way that is how you are referred to um so we can differentiate you between all the different dans now <laughs> Uh, yeah, the Cant was a specific camera, uh, was a spec cam for your first build. Um, yeah, and it's what um, it's what Bob Ruge basically recommends for his um, all his toothpick builds because he has a specific one he's he's uh, had designed that I believe doesn't have the mounting screws on. It. So he had Caddx actually develop his, the his uh, a specific case uh, for that camera. Which, you know, with Bob, it's a lot of, we got to cut weight at whatever the cost. Up to a certain point, obviously. 
<laughs> great time to have me here. <laughs> nice, Mike. Family Gabber, how you doing this morning? Um, uh, nobody but somebody is just lurking in the shadows. Hey, man, if you ever have any questions, you need any help. Uh, best way to get some help is to go to tweetfu.com and click that Discord link at the bottom. Uh, I'm always on there, and then I've got a ton of people on there that are super knowledgeable that have been picking up kind of the the, tri the tips and tricks as we go along here. Um, if you ever get stumbled up, which if you're in this hobby, you're going to get tripped up on something eventually. June Loco, flying to San Diego. Bork says he fixed up his Mob 6 uh, by prying the glued lens assembly off. Yeah, I've... I've always I've tried to fix everything that has been broken, and some things are worth it more than others. Um, cameras are usually fairly fixable, um, except for the last time I went racing. That camera was just completely destroyed; like literally ripped the sensor off the board. It it was a gruesome crash. Uh, don't be mean. Well, Kevin. Perhaps if you go to my website and you start clicking around some of those links, you might figure out how to get in there. Half of this hobby is consulting with others. I feel yeah, you are 100% correct. <clears throat> so anyways, in, uh, in FPV news, I've noticed that JB has really, really stepped up his, uh, his lighting game and his live streams, man. He is, he is really, really done some, he's done some good work. And I, I want to say it's because you guys were teasing him that I had a better lighting setup than he does, and I don't know. I mean, probably not, but I'd like to think it. So uh, I got something he don't have. Beat that. So this has been a long time project I've been working on for quite some time. Damn it, my, I have to rearrange where I put my boom arm here. So. This LED wall project, um, I wanted to buy uh, nano leaves for a very long time, but if you've ever priced out nano leaves, they are just insane expensive. So I set to building my own. And uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, but it, it, it has 1,190, 1,180 individually addressable LEDs in it. And I can do all sorts of cool shit with it. I call this one Watermelon Crunch. What do you guys think? <laughs> oh boy, you guys have figured out the, uh, the commands. <laughs> Let's see, I think if we go to a different camera here. I still, I mean, I literally finished putting it together last night. I've been waiting on LEDs for about two months now, uh, mostly because of uh, Chinese New Year. But uh, yeah, and actually, I have it, I have it enabled with my streaming software here. Let me just, uh, let me just activate it here so you guys can play around with it. There you go. Now, when you do the commands, it should change it. Oh, Morton, I had uh, I had commands turned off for it just so I could do that little presentation for it. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's all sorts of commands for it that I can do. Uh, it's running an open source software called WLED. I priced out nano leafs in the quantity I wanted, and I was looking at around like nine hundred dollars for the amount of nano leafs I wanted to do something like this. I'm under two hundred dollars. But uh, yeah, I need to change. I need to work on where I have it positioned and all that stuff. But um, yeah, it's it's all 3D printed, and all the LEDs are in here. Every one of them. There is no cuts, no joints. Uh, the only things I had to solder were two power taps 
and the um, the signal wires for the LEDs themselves. That entire thing is one continuous run of LEDs. Obviously, like the strips come in thousand, no, they come in 500 LED lengths. I had to buy four strips, but they come with connectors. You just plug them together, but uh, nothing is cut and spliced as far as the LED strips go. I am I am relying on you folks to make him have a stroke over this, please. <laughs> I would greatly appreciate it. Um, I will be doing a, a video tutorial on all of this. I've got it all uh, recorded, and uh, yeah, it. Seriously, this is this was stupid easy. Don't buy nano leafs. Do something like this, um, and it's integrated with my Lumia Stream software. So when you guys drop commands, it should adjust all that stuff. But I mean, there's, let me get you over here on the screen. There is a, just a plethora of different, different lighting commands. And you can do this all through your cell phone or you can do it through a web browser for WLED. But um, like there's uh, there's my default. And that's just like the plain stream setup. And then of course we got, we got the old unicorn vomit. Hey, Kevin Otto, the fact that you're the one that's uh, panicking about it, um, that should be a sign. Nobody else seems to really care because they all know how the, how the game works. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, like, look at all my... Uh, look at all my um, sub-250 crate giveaways. I don't put the link in the video... I put the link in the video, not in the description. So you gotta actually go, you gotta go hunt for it. These guys all know where it's at. Oh boy, I lost track of the chat here. <laughs> okay, so Mike Bergman, I say you like that. Uh, what are those LEDs called? They are... Uh, let's see. I'll get you the link for what they are. Um, it's all home built. And they are these LEDs here. So I'm using uh, some WS... Uh, 2811 LEDs. They're 12 volt and it's uh, 30 LEDs per meter. And I needed four, four strips. Mm, that price doesn't seem right. Unless the price just tanked on these things. Oh, there we go. That makes more sense. Oh, the price came way down after I bought these. <laughs> like, way, way down. <clears throat> but, yeah. These are the LEDs I bought. Of course, I bought them from AliExpress because if you buy them in the States, you're going to pay four times that much for them. So, I used that. And then the controller... Um, was a Dig Uno from QLED. And I got to give a big shout out to House FPV because he really helped me walk through uh, this stuff. He does, he does like the LED um, Christmas displays and stuff like that. So he kind of pointed me towards uh, some of the useful gear. This was the the board I used. It's you know an ESP32 running WLED, which again it's open source. And then there's a uh, a power distribution board here. Um, and these things are pretty cheap. But they're hard to get a hold of. They sell out pretty quick. Um, yeah, 30 bucks for the controller. And you can literally use an ESP32 if you wanted to really like home game this thing. If you're doing five volts, you can literally run five volt LEDs off of USB if you want to do that. And then the rest is all 3D printed stuff. Um, 
Let's see if I can. Uh, let's see where is it at. And these are all the the STLs I used. Uh, ignore these two. That's gonna go away. Uh, let's go away. So these are the these are the five components. Um, you have a frame. Let's just bring it up here in Prusa Slicer. So you have a frame. That's what it, each of the hex is made out of. Inside the frame, there is a groove that is designed in here, which the the LED strips fit perfectly in there. You don't need to peel the adhesive off. It literally is a friction fit, and it holds it right in there. Um, it does space it off the wall a few millimeters, so you get that little bit of a glow. It's hard to see in this camera because it's not really focused on it. Let's see if I can... Yeah, maybe that's a little better focus for you guys. But anyways, it spaces it off the off the wall just a few millimeters, so you really get that, that glow effect coming out from underneath it. And then there's a ledge here that holds the diffuser. The diffuser is also 3D printed. Um, in this thing, I 3D printed it out of um, PLA. So I used Overture's matte white PLA. And at, I think this thing was two millimeters. One millimeter. It is a perfect amount of diffusion. You can't really see the individual LEDs, but it does give it a nice diffused layer and it still is able to shine through just fine. So there's that. Uh, the other, the the frame, I printed these out of ABS and PETG, just kind of whatever I had laying around. Uh, and then we have the joints. So the joints are also printed out of uh, PETG or ABS, whatever your flavor is. Uh, this one, if you have two corners touching, and this one, you have three corners touching, and it just presses onto the legs here, depending on how you have them all joined up. And one last component, uh, I have the electronics box. Uh, this is where I mounted the Dig Uno. Uh, it just mounts right here. And then there's also holes for cable pass-throughs. So I've got my So I have my uh, power cords coming in and then also all the leads going to and from the start and finish LEDs come through here. And then the dig in the board fastens down right there. And then for, uh, for the center of the props and then the two center holes, I just printed those out of a black um, pet G ABS, whatever it is you wanna, whatever you wanna print it out of. So it is all printed. Except for the stuff that, you know, obviously can't be printed, like the electronics. So I will be doing, a, uh, I've recorded most of the video. Um, literally the last two, like, black diffuser panels printed this morning. Um, and I got to, you know, I put them in. I haven't had a chance to film the actual finished product yet. But <clears throat> as far as the, the way it's built and designed, that's, that's all done. Uh, for some reason, Lumia Stream's not letting you control it. I'm not sure why. It's probably because I had it turned off uh, halfway through here. Let's see. Okay, no, it's working. It's working. Okay. Oh, let's see. Got behind on the chat here. Uh, Brandon McBean says, uh, do you still recommend the Delta 5 lap timer project for someone wanting to build a timer system? If you're flying by yourself, I do not recommend it. Uh, the Chorus lap timer is probably a better option. Uh, let me get you a link for that. Uh, the Chorus lap timer would probably be a better option, but if you're flying with more than one pilot, you need individual 
receiver modules for each pilot. I know the the TBS receiver or the TBS lap timer and the uh, the lap RF the the puck one can do up to like four or eight pilots, but it only has one RX 5808 module in there. So what it has to do, it has to keep cycling the, the set channels and it keeps pulling them. Um, and you'll end up missing laps. It works okay for like whoops, because they're usually slow enough where it can catch it as it goes across. But if you're flying with more than one pilot, you want individual receiver modules per pilot. The Delta five timer is one of the best options out there. Uh, Scott Chin, I know him personally, he's, great dude but he was just overwhelmed by people who just can't just can't follow directions just the simplest directions people just can't follow it and he got sick of answering questions and he shut down uh the facebook page for the delta five timer the github repo is still up and it all does work if it's something you want to build i do have the uh the pre-built images uh, that I can send you. I've been meaning to do something with those and put them on some sort of file hosting service or just do a PR to his uh, GitHub. Thank you again, House, for trying to walk me through uh, GitHub. Still, uh, still a little wobbly with that. But uh, it is one of the best options out there. There is a different firmware that you can use. Uh, I think it's Rotor Hazard. I don't think Rotor Hazard works with um, Lifetime. The Delta 5 timer has its own built-in GUI, which works perfect for just hobbyist but it will also work with live time it's literally like one of the preferred timers for live time uh but it really came down to the fact that like live time wouldn't give uh scott like a free membership because they're using all his hardware it, it, it's just a lot of really shitty stuff of over yeah it there's there's some drama there and there's some beef um and i get it scott's just like i He's he, he's a busy dude. He has his own job. Uh, he's his, he, you know he's a busy professional, uh, and he just doesn't have time to deal with the the constant repeat questions of people just not following directions. Oh boy, I am way behind the chat. <laughs> um, is there any uh, ready to go commercially viable options that won't? Uh, that don't want DIY timers. There are the the Lap RF Puck is the only decent one, and it still kind of sucks, especially if you want more than one person. Like I said, um, other than that, there's the eight way Lap RF, but that thing is money. <laughs> Morton, I will shame him in your name. Thank you so much. Uh, Kevin Otto, you're getting really close to the point where I'm just going to stop responding to you. The files are in the computer. Uh, no, I did not uh, publish. Uh, Morton, I didn't publish the STLs uh, yet. I will be soon. Um, Uh, Timo, what microcontroller did you use to drive these? Uh, it's a uh, ESP32. I'm sure I've already answered these questions, but... <laughs> uh, the chickpea... Uh, the, the chickpea joke, that's a great one. Uh, let's see... Uh, your green screen, I can't see behind you. Yeah, I know. Uh, what did I miss? Uh, you missed a lot, Kevin. All right, Kevin Otto. Fuck you, you're out. You're not trying to participate, you're just trying to get free shit. Uh, cutting boards dollar store. Yep. Uh, they may be, uh, they may be all right. Uh, let's see. Yep. 
<laughs> Keith Jones, yeah, people can't follow directions, yeah. Um, have you used my lapse timer system? No, I haven't. Um, I've basically, I've, uh, a guy I work with uses, uh, or uh, uh, I fly with, has used the chorus lap timer, and it seems to work pretty good until it gets hot, and he's just got to find a way to cool it, especially here, because it just gets blasted in the sun. And then um, the Delta 5 timer is really all I've ever used. Uh, Mike Bergman, have you finished the X-Lite Pro? Uh, yes, I have finished the internal Express LRS uh, module for the X-Lite Pro. Uh, I'm waiting for the Express LRS devs to accept my PR into um, the uh, Express LRS repo but to publish the video. But uh, in essence, this is the PCB that I came up with it. So it's all... Uh, Athix says, uh, yeah, it, it's, yeah, it's drama. And then like even the, uh, even, even the rudder hazard guys were being shitty with the, uh, the, the GPL on it. Uh, Athix, um. When you do a open source project, it's hard to give your time away for free to thousands of people asking for a lot. Yeah, and then the, the thing that I think really kind of chapped his ass is people started producing the Delta 5 timers and charging a ton for it and not giving the the proper attribution because of the open source licensing on it and stuff like that. See you, man. <clears throat> June Loco, uh, what's the beat? What's the beat? Uh, yeah, that was coming. Yeah, you know, I mean... Not being... Not trying to be clicky or anything like that. I just... I've been doing this long enough where I know... Oh, what is going on here? Overlay... Whip. There we go. Uh, I've been doing this long enough where... I mean, if you see my inbox on a weekly basis, it is gimme quad, gimme, gimme, send to me, you do now or I hate, or I don't like you. Like that is, that's my inbox all week, at least two or three of those emails. I, I almost want to start publishing those emails to my community page just so people could see the dumb shit that uh, you have to deal with just because you're trying to do something cool and give away free stuff. All right, so as per the agreement, the uh, entry is now closed for the uh, the baby nano. Let's go ahead and give this thing away. Let's spin the wheel. Uh, this was for last month. Um, I was out of town, so I didn't have a chance to do a live stream to give it away. So we're gonna do it today. There'll be another um, thing this month as well. It's just you know, uh, sometimes they gotta overlap just because I you know I run out of time. Uh, I was out in Chicago visiting uh, my wife and daughter. I had a really good time, really good time in Chicago. Um, things are starting to settle down there. People are starting to become a lot less stupid. Uh, and uh, yeah, things were great. Um, I think I'm going back again in another couple weeks. Just trying to visit them as much as I can. All right, uh, let's see. Somebody give me a time, give me time. 10 to, 10 to 60, 10 to 60. I was already doing got my hydro drip for my dip material for my custom tea light build this week. OCD FPV, what uh, what what pattern are you going with the hydro dip? I've always wanted to try hydro dipping. I've just I've, I've never gotten around to it. Uh, along with the other million things, Morton upshot with the first time, forty two seconds. Let's uh, let's customize this sucker. Forty two seconds. All right. Okay. There we go. Um. Uh, look at the Hydra three and a half inch. Uh, haven't ever heard of it. Let's Hydra. Uh, let's see FPV. That's probably not what I'm looking for. 
Eh, oh well, I give up. That's a terrible inbox. Yeah, it uh, really makes me want to just gouge my eyes out. <laughs> I'll be, yeah. Uh, I'm here for, for info and fun. Thank you. I'm glad you're here for that. Uh, did I miss the giveaway? Uh, Planet Me FPV? No, you didn't. Uh, uh, actually, did you miss the giveaway? As of now, yes. The the terms and conditions were that it closes today at 1030. It is 1032. But we'll be doing a Super Chat giveaway for, it looks like a VTX. But, uh, I don't know. Uh, Lobart, yep, we'll be doing that. Forty-two is always the answer. Carbon fiber, yeah, that's what I figured. If I had to guess, it was going to be carbon fiber because carbon fiber is the best. Uh, yeah, I've always wanted to try it. Always wanted to try it. All right, guys, here we go. Make sure I got the right scene up. Uh, good luck. Thank you all for every. Thank you everybody who supported me. And here we go. Who is it going to be? Again, this is for February's giveaway. It's uh, going to be this little guy here, the Flywoo Baby Nano. And it does have an Insta360 Go uh, mount on it. Who is it going to be? Is it going to be Michael Bergman or is it going to be Edoc? Oh, I think it's going to be Edoc here. Congratulations, Edoc. If I can close this box, I would. Congratulations. You are the proud owner of a 1S Baby Nano Quad. I don't remember if I have a receiver in there. I think I said no receiver, but... Free Lojo printing a first successful TPU print. TPU is a beast. Once you get it going, man, uh, TPU is a lot of a lot of fun to work with. Congratulations, Edoc. Let's uh, let's get another wheel going here. All right. Okay. I uh, managed to get some flying in when I was back home. Um, the last time I was there, I tried flying my 4-inch uh, Flywheel Explorer long range at my parents' house. And I found my antennas were actually right-hand circular polarized instead of left-hand. It was one of the first run of Atomic RC antennas. There was an issue with those things. Uh, they've since fixed that. So I swapped it out for, I don't know, like some HGLRC antenna. Range is the same. So I'm starting to think... I may just have been in like a bad RF situation. Plus, you know, I'm going through a bunch of trees and I'm around a bunch of houses. So, uh, yeah, didn't make it any better. Um, I have more better antennas here that I'm going to try out, but I got a feeling it's just my RF situation. I've had that baby nano in my shopping cart forever. Uh, yeah, it's a fun little quad. Um, I flew it a few times. I don't know. I mean... I guess I have too much variety to choose from. I've, I've got a bunch of different quads. It's fun. It flies great. It's a lot better than the the Nazgul version of it, which got like 45 seconds of flight time. This thing actually flies for quite a while, and I don't remember if it's just because they put different motors on it or not, but uh, this one was definitely a better a better quad than the Nazgul. I, always, I meant to review all of them, but I eh, ran out of time. Oh, let's see. Uh, my Ender Three is a boss on TPU. Did you have to? Did you have to modify anything on it to work well with TPU ATEC? Uh, steady Eddies, after a while, successful 3D prints. Not having issues where it will fail. I have a great uh, giant glob of melted plastic all over the hot end. Should be looking for um, 
partial clog. So what'll happen when you get a partial clog is instead of you getting that laminar flow of material that comes out of the nozzle, what it'll do is it'll it'll start to hook once it comes out of the out of the orifice, it'll start to hook and it will want to kind of build up on the side of your nozzle. Take the nozzle off, take a torch, clean that sucker out, pop it back in there and give it another try. Uh, anytime I start having like weird anomalous print failures, things like that, it's usually what I do is go back and um, just just clean out the nozzle. Uh, the Atomic's just terrible. Uh, I need to open up, look at it. Albatross is what I use. Pretty good. Gets me really far. Oh, let's see, which ones did I get as a replacement? I bought these as a replacement. Um, match cam here. So I bought some of the, uh, what are these? These Luminaire Lollipops? Yeah, I bought some Luminaire Lollipops as replacements. Oh, this is way overexposed. Hang on. There we go. So I bought a bunch of these. Um, they didn't come in time for me to put them on, but I think these will probably be better. Um, these are... They don't put the gain on, on the box. Why would you not do that? But anyways, uh, this is what I'm going to try next. Um, it's funny that the um, the Atomic RC with the wrong polarization got the same range as the HDLRCs, which are supposedly the right polarization. I have, honestly I have no idea. Um, but I'm going to give these ones a shot. I know I like Luminar products. I know, or no, these are Foxier. What am I saying? These are Foxier. Uh, I like Foxier antennas. I like Luminar antennas. These should hopefully work just fine, but uh, and we'll see. We will see. <clears throat> but I need to find a place here that I can get a nice long run that has, uh, you know, fairly low RF interference. Like I try flying from my house, but I know I'm flying uh, uphill through a thick forest and like it's just through a metal building I'm just in a bad spot to test out of my backyard oh let's see back to the chat uh, I got two CR bike burger says I got C two CR tens and run direct drive on both just because direct drive prints TPU so clean yeah um, you can print TPU just fine on a Bowden setup it does tend to be a bit more stringy it's certainly doable um but direct drive is typically the way to go uh with this project here i printed most of the hoops on my voron 2.4 with a 0.8 millimeter nozzle and that thing was just slanging plastic i mean no supports just shooting that stuff out of there and <laughs> they're actually pretty it was really fast i think i got the hoops down to like it's like 20 minutes a piece. Uh, it was never able to build up full speed just because the runs were short enough where it would have to decel about the time where it got to max excel. Um, plus, I kind of tune my printers for reliability rather than speed. Um, I would rather hit print, walk away, and come back to a completed part rather than hit print, stare at it, watch it go fast, blink, and then have a big old molten ball of shit in my printer. Uh, but uh, yeah, the hoops were on the Voron. All the diffusers were printed on my Prusa because um, I've got three different sheets. I've got a, a smooth, I've got a uh, textured, and then I've got a satin sheet. That satin sheet made the best looking diffusers. So I made sure I printed all the diffusers on that satin sheet. And it's really hard to tell when you go to install them, like which side's the side that was against the sheet and which side was the side that was printed up. Like you really got to look at it in the light to see the layer lines and then you put the, the satin part facing out. Makes a really nice looking texture to it. And then all the clips, uh, the little retainer deals, those were all printed on the Prusa just because, I don't know, that's just, I actually, I think I got, I got clips running right now. I needed a few more. The job's like 99% done, but they're on the printer right now. 
Brian makes it says if you get an RF interference on long range with DJI uh, and you think it's Wi-Fi, then switch to channel three on 50 megabits or anything over five. Okay, that's good advice. I'll try that next time, Brandon. Um, I need to find more s batteries from Mob 7 HDO. I'm going to fly with only two batteries. Uh, yeah, that would be a letdown. Uh, Ricardo Ferreira says uh, I'm in a city park, which in a city park, which two and a half inch or smaller, but as silent as possible quad is there a two blade prop. There are plenty of two blade props out there. Uh, and that will be the quietest, typically the quietest one. Um, are you flying something with ducks, Ricardo, or is it open props? If it's ducks, it doesn't matter. They're all gonna be loud as shit. Uh, Brian FV says the only mods I did make my Ender 3 print TPO really well is uh, Capricorn tubing, silicone bed levelers, and a glass bed. Uh, let's see, run Ender 3 direct drive stock, uh, hot end, at dual Z Raspberry TPU. Like a beast. Awesome. He's doing his show about a foot filament through it. Uh, yeah, you can do that. Uh, sometimes that works. Or you can do, uh, there's a. Uh, there's a Tolman nylon material that you can put in there and you heat up to like uh, it's like 90 degrees and you pull all the crap out of it uh, I always just take it take it to the uh, the old map gas torch just give it a little shot watch all the stuff dip out of it and put it back on Uh, let's see. This better freaking work. Yeah, I, I know. For what I paid for, it better work. Uh, what's on the goggles? I have the iFlight. I got the iFlight crystal antennas, and let's see what I got on here. Uh, yeah, iFlight crystals, and then the TrueRC uh, stubbies. I mean to just put the stock antennas on and see what happens, but I, I always forget to take them with me. Uh, by the way, if you're looking for a good bag for your goggles, this ethics bag is pretty damn nice. Oh, but I hate steel and I hate TB. Eh, shut the fuck up. Just buy it. It's They make good stuff. I'm trying to get a hold of a second set of DJI goggles. I need to... Uh, so I'm doing a, a flight demonstration at University of Southern Alabama two weeks from now. I did it last year. Uh, I put people in the goggles and I set up a, a wireless buddy box system between uh, two controllers. I got a quad up in there and I, I let people fly and they really enjoyed it. But the um, the analog video was a real like it, it was really off putting to people. I'm trying to scrounge up a second set of DJI goggles, um, either to buy cheap if anybody's got any for sale, or you got any leads on them, or at least to borrow. Um, I need to. Uh, I I, I want to do it on DJI this year, also because all my quads are pretty much on DJI now. But other than that, <laughs> um, uh, Hobby Howie says I have uh, DJI V2 goggles. I cannot configure camera because it's grayed out in the settings using Cadex Polar Vista. Can you help me explain why? Well, what settings are you trying to configure? And also, I think with the Polar Vista, a lot of those settings are probably locked um, on the Polar. Uh, which settings can't you unlock? Or which ones are grayed out, I should say. Uh, you need to build a hunting blind. This is basically... <laughs> yeah. Uh, is the 4 Plus a PCB style traces on a solid core? Uh, wait, he's saying uh, the sorry words. Uh, the plus four is and once before are twisted gold plated elements in free air. Yeah. Uh, updates and activated same firmware. It's fancy, you know, and the DCL tryouts. Yeah, most likely the it's because the polar doesn't support it. You're probably looking to change screen ratio and probably uh, the uh, frames per second, and it probably doesn't support that. 
Live chat, Discord. Darn it, I clicked off of it. Live chat. Ooh, there we are. So this is a nine inch beast here. This is a, uh, I'm assuming a five inch, and this is a, looks like a baby nano. <laughs> or no, it's a TP, TP tree. It's, it's weird seeing individual ESCs. What motors are those? Those look like they're off of an old DJI. Ah. Cool. Very cool. Uh, let's see. R Mahel Radex says it loves the goggle straps. Yeah, I really do like the Ethics goggle straps. They are uh, they are the ones I like the most. Why do people hate steel? Um, uh, people hate steel because I don't know. It's the same reason why people hate Rotor Riot. It's just, I guess, the in thing. It's like why do people hate Nickelback? Because that's the cool thing to do. Hate Nickelback. People hate Steel because he's really good at what he does, and uh, I think people want to see him change his stuff all the time. They want to know what he likes, what what's the best, and he sticks with the same stuff forever because, I mean, that's the way to get good is stop changing all your stuff and just learn to fly what you got. Jealousy, mostly, yep. It's like, uh, I, I don't know, I, I posted a question. It was like, why, if you fly acro and you don't, or if you fly acro and you don't race why don't you race and people are saying uh, i'm too competitive and i know i won't be good at it. that does that's not being too competitive that's being a poor sport in my opinion i suck at racing i go there to have fun with friends and to go fly quads he's too good that's why uh anybody here put the tango two folding gimbals on a mambo just got a mambo Side form factor, and I was thinking about them. Uh, they're great on my Tango 2 Pro. Uh, I haven't done it, but they are a direct replacement. Uh, supposedly, that I've been hearing that there is going to possibly be an upgraded gimbal for the Bombo coming out, uh, but I really I, I can't confirm anything on that. <laughs> he says dumb things, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah that'll do it. Uh, this is all over Chris Rosser thing, yeah. Uh, I don't know what the Chris Rosser thing is. Uh, it's like people hate hate Ladrib. I is it because he wears eyeliner? I don't know. I think he's, I think he's probably one of the best FPV pilots out there. It's a different style. I think also, uh, Steel is one of the best FPV pilots out there. But they're two completely different styles of flying. Steals that angry flippy floppy. Drew is just super buttery flow, uh, but people hate him just as I mean. Like, I should do a poll. Who do you hate more? <laughs> uh, yeah, the Nepal, the Nepal trip was pretty cool looking. All right, that was a really good docu FPV vloggy type thing. They are DJI motors. Okay. I think it's entertaining as shit. Rotor Riot. I don't necessarily like every episode, but I think it's very entertaining. Uh, it's like I had a buddy who was a uh, he was a movie snob. You know, he would his favorite movie to this day is like Lawrence of Arabia. Okay, cool. I got it. I brought over a movie. It was very different. I don't remember what it was. And, and, and he was like, oh, it's not realistic. I'm like, well, it's fucking Transformers. Yeah, they transformed from... Like, what did you expect? I don't like it. It wasn't realistic. All right, whatever. <laughs> uh, Jennifer... Uh, Lupul? Lupul? I don't know. We're just going to say... Jennifer. Greetings from Singapore. Thank you for coming out today. 
Uh, Edoc, I know, I know a few people were sour and steel when he didn't take his freestyle competition, lost to MCK. Well, I don't know. That's, uh, that's where you bridge that line of being super competitive to poor sport. See what I mean, guys? Speedy Turtle, how you doing? Uh, if you don't know Speedy Turtle, he's doing the uh, Speedy Cares package. It's the uh, the FPV equivalent of give a penny, take a penny. So uh, if you want to get in on that, hit him up. He's got a Discord, Speedy. Feel free. Drop the link in the old doobly-doo there. Uh, people hate steel because it can be a little surly. Well, that's the same reason why uh, people say they don't like Bardwell is because he's kind of kind of gruff at times but it's at least for him I think it's all just a just goofing around uh, I've met I've met Drib I've met um, Vortex all those guys back when they used to be in Detroit working at uh, oh, I forgot the name of the, the quad shop they used to work at but I've met them all they, they seem like very nice people <laughs> I hate polls mostly yeah I you should you should work for the government <laughs> because it is nothing but surveys and polls. It's guyliner. Yeah, I know. People will hate literally anybody. Oh, I know who somebody who hates me today. What was his name? Ah, you know what? Wait. Uh, Kevin Otto. Yeah, I'm sure he hates me now. Um, something like that. Mike Bergman. Uh, yeah, let's see. Uh, Yeah, Edoc, I've never heard anybody say they're not a fan of MCK. Everybody seems to worship at the altar of MCK. Uh, for good reason. <laughs> He's really fucking good. Missed Edgy Rotor Riot. Uh, yeah, I, mean, they're, I like the things that they're doing now because they're doing like very like technically interesting things like landing a quad on a wing and having it recharge the quad while it's on top of the wing. Like That's, that's some pretty neat stuff. Uh, building a multi-wee quad out of a, a wee nunchuck. Like, Pretty neat, pretty darn neat. I think them adding uh, Let's Fly RSC to the mix was uh, a real good, uh, a real good um, move there. He's got does some really interesting stuff. Marcus Zero says I refuse to f pay for an AMA membership. That's required to race. It's also on the opposite side of town, an hour away. So a firm pass on racing. Well, I mean that's a good reason. Uh, the AMA membership, unfortunately, is usually a requirement. And the AMA, uh, I don't know. They're not, um, they're not uh, a big fan of quads, from what it seems like. Drone mesh. I don't know. I haven't seen anything from drone mesh in a very long time. <clears throat> I really liked. I liked his uh, ESC testing, and he was trying to work out the uh, AI flight controller software. I really like that stuff. His reviews were very, uh, I don't know. I don't I, I didn't really like the reviews he did. <laughs> JB gets frustrated and swallows the fish hook off too often. I don't even know what that means, but I'll go with it. Uh, yeah, there's no way. Yeah, he's definitely an awesome dude. Um, if you go back to Steel's channel, I don't know if they're still up, but you can go way back and look at some of his uh, L line of sight flying. He's no slouch. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty good stuff. Just entertainment. That's a good way to look at the world. It's just entertainment. Now, if you got to deal with him in real life, that's that's uh, that's a whole different story. Uh, MCK Min Chan Kim. He's a South Korean FUV pilot. Warm but windy in central Ohio. What should you do? But uh, been out every day this week. Cool, man. I'm glad glad people are getting out and going, getting a chance to go fly. Um, like I said, I got some time to fly out in uh, Michigan, Chicago. Uh, it was. It was pretty cold and windy, um, but still got out. Still got a chance. I haven't done anything with the video. 
I don't know. I just flew for fun. Uh, worked with uh, Brandon Baked Beans to really try to tune up this AOS 5 I built. The AOS 5 is a ugly ass frame and it's not the easiest to build in, but damn, it flies good. It flies really good. And it's a bit on the heavy side too, but still. Um, Mike Hernak. Hi all from Wisconsin. Welcome. How are you doing? One of my all-time favorite, yeah, the drinking and flying, and Steel was still awesome at it. Uh, I don't remember what I was listening to, but they they talked about that episode, kind of like the the behind the scenes, like afterwards, people were just booting all over the place. Ken Heron, I've I've watched a couple of his. Uh, he's got that he's got that uh, that radio disc jockey kind of. Uh, format to him I like it but then there's things that he that that typical type of uh, media does that jars me I'm just like eh, eh. like the playing the drops all the time like I, I, I don't know I, I I know it's a radio thing but it does I, I don't know it it doesn't do well uh, in video L Leston hi are you doing this morning it's 11 o'clock here so all right let's uh, let's go up to this poll here we put a poll out for what do you guys want? You want a camera? This is a Cadex drop camera. Cadex. I honestly don't know what it is because Cadex doesn't actually put the model on the camera anywhere. I'm pretty sure it's maybe a baby Rattel, something or other. Um, a Rush Ultimate VTX or a a One S. Ultra Charger, the stuff. Well, it's one to two us actually. It does both. And let's see. Uh, I'll give that pull a couple more minutes. We'll close it down here, in maybe five ten minutes. Looks like the VTX is ahead by a small margin over the camera. It, it's an ant with a case. Is it an ant? I don't think it is. I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea what this camera is, to be honest with you. It was on my AOS build when I did um, when I did it in analog, but I swapped it over to DJI, uh, and it'll stay that way. Have you watched Sync's videos? Yeah, he's really good. Uh, I think I see more of Sync's videos through like Instagram stories than anything else. Uh, Rush Ultimate is good. Yes, it's a very good VTX. I need another VTX. Yep, he's definitely got that morning show guy vibe to him. For sure. Cadex Eos, that's... Yeah, that sounds familiar. Let's see, is it Cadex Eos? Uh, nope, that's Eos 2. Why can't you just show me what the hell I'm looking for? No, because it has a solid back cover on it. These are all micro cameras, I believe. I have no idea what it is. It's Caddick something. Oh... I actually, I think this is it. I think it might be a Rattel 2 Micro. Yep, that's it. It's a Rattel 2. That's what it is. <laughs> I don't know why they wouldn't put the name on it. Like, come on, guys. Whatever. Caddx. Caddx being Caddx. Um... Uh, happy birthday to your uh, daughter, Sam McGavern, turning 11. He does still do morning radio. Where does he do morning radio at? Like, what? what is his... Is it a syndicated thing, or is it uh, local? Pedro Tomei, yes. It's a uh, Rattel 2. Cadex Rattel 2.
Uh, Paul McDonald says he used DaVinci last night. Took some Googling to figure out. Uh, yeah, I really wish when I started this whole FPV youtube thing, I wish I would have started on DaVinci. Unfortunately, I was using a uh, Microsoft Surface Book 2 that had an internal and a dedicated GPU. The only editing software I could find that would utilize that dedicated GPU was Adobe Premiere. Therefore, now I am stuck on the Adobe Premiere freight train. Oh, we have a twist to the giveaway today. Courtesy of one Speedy Turtle FPV. It says if the poll wins for VTX, I'll ship a camera and vice versa. So, here we go, guys. Here's what we got going today. So you have a chance to win a camera and a VTX. Speedy, that is mighty generous of you. Thank you for uh, thank you for chipping in. <laughs> that is awesome. So. If you win the VTX, you get a camera. If you want a camera, you get the VTX. Thank you so much. That is awesome. Speedy Turtle for the win. Super awesome, dude. If you like, I said, if you're not part of his Discord or and his uh, Patreon, you really need to. Speedy, drop that link in the video. Uh, where was I in the chat? Uh, do another spin on the wheel, and I'll ship. Either Cam or Chase the winner will freaking do. Um, WJLI. Where is WJLI? That is in Rock 98.3. Wow, it's a rock station. I'm surprised there's still one left. I'm surprised Terrestrial Radio still goes. Uh, let's see. I think it's a... Is it Illinois-based? Kentucky. Maybe. I don't know. Yep, it's... Uh, Patuck, Patuck, Kentucky? Patuka? I don't know. Southern name, uh, southern city names are just ridiculous. But uh, Kentucky. East of Mississippi. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. So we're looking at the, the VTX here. All right. We're going to close this thing down in uh, one more minute. It's 11.05 where I'm at. We'll shut this sucker down. And uh, start taking names. Very nice, you speedy. Let's see, what else? Oh, um, I've also been using uh, these guys. If you guys haven't seen the uh, ISDT Bat Error plugins, they're a uh, they're a little adapter that goes on your balance port, and it's they're pretty useful. I don't think they're I don't think they're useful for everybody, but they do a lot of battery management for you where they track cycles, uh, over discharge, over overcharge, and they're also a, uh, a battery um, uh, maintainer. So you can set in there how long till it takes the battery down to storage voltage. So like uh, before I go on a trip, I'll charge up all my batteries, full voltage, and I have it set to after three days, they'll start discharging the batteries. Super cool. And it just does it autonomously in your bag. Really like it. Thank you, Great Scott, for subscribing. I don't know how much I trust this thing to be accurate, but it seems to be doing its thing. Let's see. Uh, is this a super chat entry? Yes, it is. Let's see. Let's, uh, let's go back to Watermelon Crunch here. I don't know. I got all sorts of different things. Uh, and the other cool thing with WLED is I can break it up in segments. So segment 0, 1, 2, 3, and 
four are just the props and segment five, six, seven, eight are just the body. So I can actually change things independently of, uh, of other LEDs in there. So then if I wanted to do just the props, I could do that. And, and there's a few issues with WLED. Like there's groupings. I wish I could, because I have all the props set as group one and the body set as group two. I wish I could do um, uh, patterns based on group rather than going through and selecting all the different segments. I, you might be able to. I just, I haven't quite figured it out yet. Like literally just got this thing up and going last night. And I think I've killed it. There we go. Go back to the corn vomit. That's right. I forgot. You can't see it with the uh, the desktop cam. My bad. So, like I was saying, I can select individual segments and change just what those groups of things do. Thank you. More an upshot. Got you on the wheel here. So, all right. Yep. $5 super chat. We'll get you on the wheel once for the VTX. Let's close this thing and pull. All right, I've got a uh, another race next weekend. I uh, really need to get some gear <laughs> up and running for that. I haven't had a chance. Um, and then also, like I was saying, I'm doing a, uh, a flight demonstration at the University of Southern Alabama um, on the 15th or the 17th. 15th if it's a good day, uh, 17th if the 15th is a rainy day. Uh, I'll be doing it there. Uh, Lawrence says, check as he PayPal. Thank you, my friend. Got you on there. Uh, so big shout out to uh, Lawbart here. Um, if you guys are on my Patreon, you'll know that I've been working on finding a way to integrate Express LRS into a X Lite Pro. And he was kind enough to send me his X Lite for me to, to work on. I mean, it was either that or I was going to buy one. Uh, and he shipped one from not anywhere near here. Let's say different country. And by the time I was done with it, Free Lojo got you on the wheel. Brian FUV, I'll get you in there as well. Uh, by the way, I will shuffle these. So if you'd put in multiples, they will be shuffled. However that works out, that works out. Uh, Joe Monkey got you in there as well. Uh, so anyways, he sent me his radio and I was able to integrate Express LRS into the radio internally without changing any functionality of the radio at all. So you still have access, you still have the external module bay, and then you also have Express LRS in it. Also on that, it does have the VTX backpack functionality. So it will do lead follow on your, your goggle module when you change VTX channels. But I did have to custom design a PCB. This thing is friggin' tiny. Well, I'll put it up to a this Rush VTX, just so you can get an idea of how small this PCB is. Uh, <laughs> so that video, it's in the queue uh, to be released, but I've pushed a, uh, a Mac 282 on the wheel for two. We'll get you in there. Uh, I've pushed a pull request to Express LRS to have them integrate it into their hardware section been a couple weeks they haven't done it yet i'm not really sure why i don't know if they have a problem with it or if just nobody's doing it nobody's really talked to me about it so uh eventually i'm just gonna say screw it i'm gonna release it and just link you to my github where you can get the information you can get the uh the, the, the gerber files for the boards or if you want to do this yourself i have the gerber file i have the the pcb for sale on my website 
tweetfb.com. You fail to correctly answer, enter, answer the math problem. That is embarrassing. Eight plus two is ten. There we go. It wasn't that math problem I failed. Let's see. We got uh, over here. We got the tiny Express ORS PCB, five bucks. It's just a bare PCB. You'll need a capacitor, a resistor, a uh, a uh, ESP32, and a E27 LoRa module. All dirt cheap parts. And then if you want to do the VTX backpack. Any Express LRS receiver can be used for it, but there's a EP28 from Happy Model. Super tiny. Uh, it's the cheapest and the smallest uh, board I could think of to do this with. But it all packs in there just fine. Oh, and a, and a DC to DC converter as well. Martin Lubshot, I like the stream so much I hit the like button a second time. What happens when you hit it twice? Does it does it unlike? Just hit it an odd number of times, one, three, five, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, let's see, I think I've got some pictures of the install, just so you guys can see what I'm doing here. Uh, let's see, where did I bury this thing? Xlight Pro. Uh, let's see. Firmware update. Nope. Looks like ELRS. Here we go. B roll. Uh, here, let's put some pictures up. Here is. Wrong screen. There we go. There's the PCBs and some testing. That's kind of what the whole mess looks like. So you've got the PCB with the, uh, the LoRa module. Here's the VTX backpack. Super tiny board. That thing's probably 10 by 10 millimeters. And then there's your V-Reg. And the reason why I went off the board with these is because there is only enough room under the main module for this board. So then you have to remotely mount these things, tuck them under other components in the radio. Uh, some buildup. So that's where it's going to fit. It fits right here. Then on top of this goes this board. This is the, uh, the access internal RF module. That goes up over top of this thing. And then you just kind of splice into the connections there. Only needs three. Power ground and uh, S port. And that's kind of what the wiring diagram looks like. It's, I mean, obviously these aren't to scale, but um, it's pretty easy to do. And then you just need FTDI to program uh, the ESP32. As far as programming the um, the VTX backpack, that's all done over Wi-Fi. And then from this point forward, programming the internal ELRS module is done over Wi-Fi. If you bork the flash, that's the gotcha. You're gonna have to pull the whole thing out and, well, not to pull the whole thing out, but you have to pull the radio apart. And yeah, you're gonna have to pull the whole thing out, wire in the FTDI and recover. There might be a way to actually reflash it from the ES, the EP, I think it's EP28, the EP28 module, but that will require some involvement from the devs to do that. And there's some kind of 3D mockups of the board itself. Uh, my first time using um, an online PCB designer, uh, it was a want to rip my hair out experience, but we got through it. <laughs> The silk screening's not great on it. Um, I have changed it a little bit to make it clearer, but these boards, um, there's, I mean, the, the silk screen's just, I don't know. It's inferior, but it's just silk screening. Uh, Athex says PP, PP, PayPal. Uh, let's see. how many did you put in there? All right, got Athex FBV on there for one. Thank you so much. 
And we've got uh, Nobody But Somebody with uh, five squiggly bucks. Wee! Uh, are you going to package all the parts and put some grip tapes, sell it as a X-Lite ELRS refresh kit? I could do that. Uh, I'll be honest, there's a lot of time that goes into soldering that whole mess up. If somebody wanted me to do that, I would do it on an individual case-by-case -case basis. For the most part, I really, I don't really have the time to do it. But if you really wanted that, let me know and uh, we can work something out. Yeah, uh, I, I can definitely work it out. Um, but... I mean, it's 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 time consuming. <laughs> I'll be honest. Uh, there's a lot of pins on the ESP32 and that that Laura module. Um, I mean, so every one of these little pads here gets a solder, and so does every one of these. Not all of them are used, but you know they are there for. Um, for support as well but it's a lot of pads it's a lot of work um, my success rate with the the cheapo esp 32s is not great uh, what i usually do is i will flash the esp 32 before i even bother soldering it up with this board which it's just a bunch of spring pins this makes life a lot easier so what i do to not waste a lower module because the lower module is the biggest expense of the build is i will um a flash the ESP32 of this, I'll solder it to the PCB because these things are cheaper than chips. I'll solder it to that. I'll put my regulator on there, my capacitor, my resistor, and then I will wire it up to a radio, power ground, S-port, and see if the Lua can communicate with it. Right there is my first go no-go for me. If the Lua won't talk to the ESP32, I take the capacitor, the resistor, the voltage regular off, and I throw the whole thing in the trash. It's not worth trying to desolder uh, the SP32s. These boards are so thin because, I mean, they're about as thin as you can get them uh, to save on space that um, the likelihood of you getting it off of there without damaging the traces is pretty unlikely. So, right there, that's the least uh, that's the least expensive route I can go before I uh, before I continue to solder on the uh, lower module. Lower modules are fairly cheap, but it's the most expensive part in the build. So. Uh, when I build these up, that's my checkpoint. ESP32, voltage regulator, cap and capacitor, wire it up. If it doesn't work, shit can it. Oh, something we haven't done today is we haven't visited the, the doggo cam. As you can see, there are now three doggies here. Um, I went and uh, I... I my, my wife and daughter, they took uh, Lucy. That's the, the little one in the middle. Uh, she's a Chewini. They took her up to Chicago. It's cold and miserable there. She's not gaining, or she's, she's losing weight. She just doesn't eat much. So I brought her home for a month or so just so she can warm up and be around her buddies. She is a super sweet dog, but literally she'll go outside, come back in, look at you, and take a right on the ground in front of you. I, yeah. But it is doggy treat time. Lucy. She's pretty picky. Like she doesn't want the dog treats. Lucy, you try this one. Yeah, she's a pick she's a pretty picky dog. Probably why she's so skinny right now. Uh, let's see. Steady Eddie. Let me get you on the wheel there. And let's see. Expander. All right. For the old 420. 
Uh, let's see. I have not been paying attention to the chat. Sorry, guys. Um, yeah, so anyways, Market Zero, that's the, the answer to your question is if you want it, if anybody wants that like pre-done as a kit, let me let me know. Uh, maybe we can work something out. Uh, Lovers doesn't want to fly. Uh, so he's got the radio back finally. He says he wants to fly with it this week, and my new goggles arrived. So I need to sort of explain how to set it up, or just put my Lua on the radio. So you can go ahead and fly it as it is. I think the bind phrase is ELRS. I think that's why I left the bind phrase at. I, I don't know. Guys, the bind phrase is not a secure thing. Don't use your, you know, your password, your bank accounts, or any of that stuff. It's, uh, uh let's see, bind phrase I used. Yeah, ELRS24. That's the bind phrase I always use for um, Express LRS stuff. Uh, it's not a security thing. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't use that kind of information in there. It's just more or less convenient things. Convenience thing. Uh, 21 purebred. No, you did not. Uh, uh, so yeah, you can fly it as it is, uh, or if you're talking about the uh, the VTX changing thing, um, hit me up over on Discord and I'll I'll give you the information on how to wire that up to your receiver module. I don't. Go for X uses an external module, right? I think. Does it? I don't know how that'll work with an internal one without making life really e difficult. Guys on 04X. Let's see. Let's take a look at this thing. So, okay, yeah, it does use use the rapid mix module. So, um, let's see. Express L R S GitHub. Express LRS GitHub. We're looking at uh, backpack here. And Here is the basic explanation of how it works. Uh, so Express LRS will control the VTX channel of your quad as long as you have smart audio or tramp uh, telemetry set up properly and you can normally change your VTX to the OSD. You can go into the VTX management in your radio and you can change channel. It will change the channel on your quad. It's kind of what Ghost and TBS have been doing except for it's brand agnostic. It doesn't care what hardware is hooked up to it and you retain your VTX OSD adjustments in beta flight. When you go with Ghost or uh, TBS's solution, you have you no longer get beta flight OSD uh, changing. So you still keep that. And then what happens is the ESP32 that's in your radio talks to the receiver that's attached to your goggles. If you have a TBS Fusion, it's just a firmware flash. The TBS Fusion is a, uh, it's a much uh, it's a much more robust piece of hardware than the rapid fire is. It just has more parts in it, has the ESP32. So that's already in there. You just have to flash the right firmware to it. And then it will talk to your transmitter module. So when you go to change your VTX, the quad changes, your VRX changes. Now with other receivers like the, um, the TBS Fusion or just a standard RX5808 based module, like the Rapid Mix, things like that. You have to wire in, let me grab it real quick. <clears throat> you can literally wire in just about anything, uh, any of the happy, uh, any of the Express LS receivers, but Happy Model does make the EP82, that's, Uh, the EP82. This is it. It is friggin' tiny. That's that's the tip of my finger there. Super tiny. So then what you're going to do is you end up wiring that into your VRX module. Uh, let's see right here. Here's the wiring guide. Let's see. Where is it at? see okay so this is how you wear up uh like an ep base receiver this is considered an ep base receiver so all you have to do is wire up clk clk clock 
data, CS, five volts on ground to the appropriate pins on your receiver. The pins are basically the same on most receivers. Oh, look at that. Someone did the, the VTX audio mod. That's my mod. I did that long before anybody, or at least I published a video on it long before anybody else did. But yeah, it's a pretty, pretty quick and easy install. Um, here is a link to the wiring, wiring, come on, wiring guide there. But if you have, like I said, if you have a fusion, it's, you do have to take the fusion apart. You have to wire in an FTDI and a wire to the boot pad and it's one flash. And then from there, there forward, anytime you need to change anything or update the firmware, you can just enable Wi-Fi, and it's just like flashing a, a, any other Express LRS receiver. It's pretty cool, pretty cool stuff. <laughs> 21 Pure Red, we have three Chewinis in our house. Uh, I was worried when we picked her up because, you know, that Chihuahua breed is usually pretty nippy and Let's just put it bluntly. They're kind of shitty, but she is the most docile dog I have ever had. She is just sweet as hell. When my daughter's around, I think eventually she'll evolve to not have legs because my daughter carries her everywhere. I mean, she'll put her in her backpack. The dog's just like, whatever, I'll go along with it. Tyler Double D got attacked by his new 5-inch build. Uh, my left hand is now shredded and useless for a few weeks. How, all right, we need more details. How on earth did that happen? It's Darts, how you doing this morning? How's the old Dirty D? Things are hopefully warming up a bit, but they're gonna warm up and then you're gonna get like a foot and a half of snow. Uh, Joy Monkey, if you're not going to be making multiples of those PCBs, you might want to go with a stencil, solder paste, hot air instead of solder iron makes life very easy in batches. Um, I have a stencil uh, for a separate board. I tried the solder paste. I'll be honest, uh, it was just easier with a soldering iron. <laughs> uh, but then again, I, I, I know doing a stencil and solder paste and hot air is the better way to do it and it's easier. I just haven't had enough time to perfect um, using hot air to do it. So for me, just solder iron, get them all. I'm actually pretty good with the, the soldering iron at this point. But you use, uh, but just using unique binding phrase, just in case. Uh, 60 and windy AF. Yup, that seems to be. Anytime it's starting to warm up, it, it seems to be windy AF. <laughs> you get the old stranger for the next couple months. All right, let's see, what do we got on the wheel here? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 11 entries on the wheel here for the VTX. Wait, what are we doing? Are we doing the VTX or the camera? I don't remember. Somebody refresh, uh, uh, we're doing the VTX. Where'd I put it? There it is. Uh, BTX, it's the Rush Ultimate. Uh, it's the their little 20 by 20 dealio. Um, I'll find an antenna and slap it on there for you as well, or at least an SMA. And uh, Speedy Turtle has been generous enough to donate a camera to the giveaway. Super kind of you. Uh, $5 super chat, get in on that. We'll spin this thing in about 15 minutes, 11.45. It's 11.30 here, my time, 11.45. We'll... Uh, We'll, we'll spin that. Uh, did you get me on PayPal? Yep, Athix, I got you on there for one. <laughs> Mike Bergman. Uh, I'm left-handed. Uh, what's on the wheel? I think I just told you. So the wheel is, yeah, the VTX from me and a camera from Speedy. We'll do that. Um, let's see what else we got going on. Um, I've got a, uh, oh, so uh, last month with uh, the FPV crate, sub 250 crates, I said, I'm out. I'm no longer buying these things. I just can't afford it. 
but I've got them. I, I, I've been in close communication with the, the FPV crate guys, letting them know like the things that are good, things that aren't good in the boxes. And the last time I'm like, look guys, I'm sorry. I'm out. I can't keep, I, I can't afford to, to keep doing this thing. And they're like, you know what? We should have done this a long time ago. You're on the payroll. We're going to send them to you. Not really on the payroll, but we're going to start sending them to you. So I'm like, well, hell yeah. Um, the only stipulation is, is I owe them a review now. Um, just like anything else that you get uh, sent to as review, you kind of, that's kind of the agreement. They send it to you, you review it. Um, again, it's going to be a completely unbiased review. They don't, they specifically said, we do not want you to change anything about your content. We want them to be as honest as and um, as they always have been, they want them to be honest because it's good for them for f for feedback. And then the only other thing they wanted is they wanted a raw copy of the review sent to them so they can use it as a YouTube ad. So I guess if you, I, I've been a YouTube premium uh, member since like day one of the service. So I haven't seen a YouTube ad in, God, it's gotta be like 10 years now. Uh, except for when I went to Puerto Rico, because I guess it doesn't work there. Um, so a clip of my video will now be possibly a YouTube ad. If anybody sees that, let me know. I'd be, uh, be curious. Um, so, and they're still sending two. So I've got a giveaway going for one of them. I think I'm going to draw that next week. A benefit of being one of the cool kids up top yonder. I can't really point to it here. One of these guys is uh, you get the entry link over on Patreon. If you're not, you got to find the link in the video. I make it kind of difficult to find because eh, it's kind of fun. Uh, let's see, Family Guy says 9:30 here in California. Bunch of skin glue to carry yourself. That's the way to do it. Um, more Upshot says when I got the F405 flight controller in December I dropped them but uh, I'm wearing it up now it's better than I thought not what I wanted but not crap no it's not it's not a bad flight controller um, it was like when you look at the progression of the items that I've been like I've been sub 250 since day one since the day it started here is here is a list of all the things that have been in the crates since I don't know if I can make that bigger. There we go. This is what's been in the crates since it started. T motor motors, F7 mini, Luminar Lux, QAVS frame, 30 amp ESC, more motors, rip squeak, 35 amp ESC, F7 flight controller, Roma frame, more motors, and then we have this. This was the turd. It was like, oh, what the hell? And then this this Veyron frame, like, oh, what the hell? Because the props that come with this frame that are recommended by HGRC do not fit on these motors. Okay? And I, I talked to them about it. They're like, oh, shit. Like, they didn't know it. They had no idea because HGRC wasn't very clear on the fact that their motors are specially designed with a flat top to take those D35 pusher motors. And then like this month was a hack RC 40 amp ESC. If you haven't seen the video, then please give it a watch. But you can see really strong, really strong items all the way up till December, January, and then February, eh, not too bad. It's uh, you know, it's a BL Hell ES, ESC, 40 amp ESC, looks decent. Um, again, I haven't really flown the ESC, so it doesn't look bad. Oh, what is going on? We back up.
All right, I had to stop the stream in OBS and uh, open it back up. Uh, it looks like I'm getting good bandwidth now. I think it might have been an OBS issue. Uh, and stream health is poor. Awesome. Ah, God, this internet absolutely sucks here. Absolutely sucks. Uh, is we, we doing better now? Let me know. Seems good. Looks good so far. Can't help you with CenturyLink. Yeah, that's the only option I have here is CenturyLink. Uh, it's DSL. It's a dual bonded 25 megabit signal or uh, uh, service. And that's it. That's all I got. Like I went to my wife's place up in Chicago. And I don't know who she has, but it's like uh, the speed meter just goes back. Just buried like gigabit internet. It's freaking nice. And I'm the only one in the house. No one else here. All the services are closed. I don't have Steam or any of that stuff running. It's just a little hookup. Uh, let's see. Spanner said, don't put me on the wheel. Uh, just put spin again instead. All right, we can do that. That's interesting. Spin. Again. Spin again. <laughs> That's interesting element. I like that. Never done that. All right, we got to spin again in there for you, Spander. I really agree. I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, still kind of poor. Um, Okay, yeah, that's, yeah, the the shipping is kind of ridiculous. Uh, nope, didn't do both spins yet. Just spun the uh, one for the, um, I can't ever remember the name of this thing, the, the Baby Nano Quad right here. Uh, five minutes, we'll spin the wheel for the VTX and camera. Oh, oh sorry, Morton, I, I got that wrong. <laughs> Oh, man. So uh, I'm racking my brain trying to figure out what to do for a giveaway for uh, this next month. I usually do a quad. I have I have a couple back there. Just trying to figure out which one to give away. Um, and I'm also looking for a set of DJI goggles either to buy or borrow uh, for a couple days in two weeks. If you know anybody out there, if you want to hook me up, let me know. Um, if any, you know anybody is selling a set for a decent price, or if uh, if you got a set you're not going to be using, I would greatly appreciate. It. I'm kind of in a bind here. Um, no one, no one in my area flies DJI that I know of. But yeah. And I've been flying this guy for the last um, well, basically since I got it. It's my new daily. I'll be honest. I'm really, really happy with it. Uh, except for two things. The uh, the sliders absolutely suck. And the, um, the Edge TX firmware seems to be a bit on the buggy side uh, with this. Which I'm hoping they clean up in the next release. Which should be hopefully by the end of the month. Mac 282. Sorry to see not a lot of super chats, buddy. Here's some more support. Oh, I'll get you on the wheel two times. That's uh, that's some damn uh, <laughs> that's some damn good uh, good chances there. Uh, what camera do you recommend for the baby ape? Anything other than what comes on it? They do have a baby ape pro. Uh, let's see. Baby ape pro. Let's see, baby, ape, baby, ape, baby. Ape. John, a the baby eats a boy. What's that from? A pro, and they put a Cadex Ant, which is the minimum acceptable camera that I would put on there. Um, Cadex Ant. I am a big fan of run cam cameras. They're also quite a bit more expensive, but I like the picture of run cam cameras. Uh, run cam Racer Nano. I would say would be a good option. 
Uh, or the Caddix Ant. That's not a bad one either. Either one, I think you'd be happy with. June Loco says he likes his Zoro too. Yes, uh, House FPV has been working on a way to make it more energy efficient. And there is a regulator on the, the ELRS board that you could swap out. Um, that's the next thing on my list of shit to do that I'm gonna work on uh, doing a update on that. Uh, what am I using those sliders for? I'm using them for volume. That's really what it comes down to. So like when I turn my radio on, let's, let's see if you guys can hear it. Welcome to HTX. Level warning. Welcome to HTX. So the volume is set all the way down and it will bounce up and down. And I don't think it's a slider's input, but uh, I use it for volume. And, and then that's the left one. The right one on my race quads, I use it for um, a throttle limiter. So in my... In my race model here. Uh, and the other complaint about this radio is there's way too many damn buttons on it. It does not need... It does not need all these stupid buttons. Uh, so I use the top one here. Uh, let's see, page. As a throttle limiter. So I can, so I got my throttle all the way up. And I can roll it back to like 50% throttle all the way up to, I've been messing with it, so. Um, all the way from 50 to 100 percent power output uh just to kind of dial back the motors kind of on the fly if i wanted to so you don't lose any resolution but you do limit the the maximum throttle output so that's what i use the the sliders for and then the other thing is um when you go to like let's say i want to copy this model or copy and let's say I want to put it here. It doesn't actually copy it. So there's there's a few bugs uh, with Edge TX that uh, haven't been worked out yet. But so far so good though. All right, it's 11:45. We're gonna stop the super chats. Oh, Tyler. Uh, I was not paying attention to the chat. Got you in there for two. Congratulations. Uh, we'll get you in at the last minute here. Uh, let's see. Display three. Which will be. All right. Um, is it true coming out with metal gimbals? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I think it's a rumor, and I think if we keep spreading the rumor long enough, uh, Radio Master will be like, oh, all right, apparently we're making metal gimbals. Who's on that? I hope that's what happens. It would be nice for them to come out with um, like an AGO style gimbal for it and a 100 milliwatt or a, a one watt VTX and not VTX, jeez, man. Not enough coffee today. A one watt ELRS module and 18500 batteries. All you guys going for 18650s, you're getting greedy. And like everybody's complaining about the 18300s and all these people that are making modifications to put bigger battery packs in there i don't think i've actually flown the radio in a day from full to empty like i fly all day on this thing and it's plenty of power 18 300s whatever in there the yes they're small but it's it's enough for 99 percent of the people who are going to go out and fly the radio if it's not that's why there's other options for you but i don't think you need to bastardize the case or add some dingleberry gland on the bottom of it to put 18 650s or whatever on it i don't think it's really necessary Uh, nothing but somebody had to eat with the family. Uh, the spins already done right. Uh, what were the results? So the first spin was for the uh, Flywoo Baby Nano that was going to EDOC. Haven't spin done the spin for the VTX and camera yet. Um, that was a five dollar super chat. They need a Pro and Pro Plus. Stay tuned. Uh, yeah. So yeah, they do need a, a Radio Master Pro Pro Plus. Fix my cord arrangement. I need to fix my cord arrangement. I don't know what you're talking about, Free Lojo. 
yeah, the 18500s were meh on the X Lite, but this thing I think will be, I, it, it'll be fine on this. All right, guys, we're gonna close down the. We're gonna close down the uh, super chat giveaway. Let's shuffle the wheel here, and let's see. Somebody knows what the next question is. Go ahead and post it up. Number between 10 and 50. 37 seconds. All right. 37. There we go. 37 seconds. And good luck to everybody. Thank you so much for playing and supporting me. And here we go. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and go. Who's it going to be? Not saying anything. <laughs> yeah, it's... So I, I always say it, but like when you pick, when you're on the wheel and you pick the number, you basically pick whether you win or, you, or whether you win or you lose. Oh man, Morton, is it going to be you today? I think it's going to be Morton Upshot. <laughs> what are the chances? Like you're almost always the first person up there with a the time. Congratulations, Morton. We have learned, do what you do, but do the opposite. Congratulations. <laughs> what are the chances? Uh, it's because it starts not playing too, so uh, that helps too. Congratulations. Uh, hit me up on uh, Discord and uh, we'll get uh, we'll get some uh, shipping information. I'll, uh, I'll send the, the info over to Speedy as well so you don't have to work with both of us there. And if you guys want to join my Discord, go to tweetfu.com and at the bottom of the screen, we have a bunch of links down here. These are affiliate links to help me out anytime you want to shop at Race Day Claws, PayPal, or uh, Darwin FV, Teespring, Banggood, FPV Crate, Insta360, Amazon, GetFV, Flywoo, Beta FPV, or AliExpress. Go ahead and click one of those links, buy whatever you want. Uh, I'll get a small commission. It costs you absolutely nothing. And if you want to follow me on Patreon, Discord, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, apparently you can follow me on search, terms of service, or refund policy. Maybe I need to fix that. Uh, go ahead and click that over there. If you want to get on my uh, my Discord, that is the link to get in there. Go ahead and spin again. All right. Speedy's got something up his sleeve. And 54321. Same time? This is on you, Speedy. What's you know, spin it again, same time? Let's see what we got going on here. For the VTX? Oh, look at that. Alright. Speedy, you pick a time. Same time. All right, here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Make sure I got the right scene up. Round and round it goes. If you see me looking over here, it's because I'm looking at the screen that this is on. It's over here for me. Well, I think we've learned something today. <laughs> it's not super random. <laughs> All right, just for shits and grins, this doesn't count. I want to spin it again. <laughs> Let's see what happens here. This doesn't count for anything. I'm just kind of curious now. I want to see what happens. Well, I'd say it's not that random. <laughs> All right. So I think it's about the same amount of time. It just keeps going just a little bit farther. 
All right, guys, that's that's enough of that. That was all right. Congratulations, more enough shot. <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, let's see, Mahel says, uh, LO, second monitor, mo monitor for wall hacks. Well, what a wall hack is. Yeah, you gotta change time. Oh, well. <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah, that's kind of funny. Okay, so that's something... We've learned something today. <laughs> yeah, we I guess we all learned something today. I feel like it's a South Park episode. <laughs> Gotta change the time or or reshuffle the names. That that that'd be the way to do it in the future. But hey, good to know. Congratulations, Morton Upshot. We've we've learned something today. Thank you. Uh alright. So Joshua Bardwell's coming on here in about five minutes. Stick around to watch the shenanigans that go on over there. Make sure you guys harass him. How about this guy here? Because, uh, you know, I'm not... I mean, I started this long before he improved on his, uh, on his uh, live stream lighting. This has been in the works since before Chinese New Year. So I think I started working on it like early January, early January, uh, working with um, House FPV. By the way, House FPV has been working his tail off on a really cool product. Uh. It is this, this is his House FPV controller. So, this will take a Raspberry uh, Pi Pico or Raspberry Pi 2040 and Express LRS receiver, and this is a USB Express LRS dongle. Now, I know a lot of people are like, well, why would you want to do that? You can just direct connect or do uh, Bluetooth over Express LRS. Myself and a lot of other people have a lot of issues with the Bluetooth over uh, Express LRS. It freaking sucks. Like, literally, I was flying the Velocidrone map in Bardwell's yard and was having fail safes. It, it was like, it was like genuine fail safes, uh, especially on the far corner of his yard. It was really weird, and it's because Bluetooth, at least in my situation, sucks. Bluetooth sucks with Express LRS. Uh, a lot of people are finding if they have other things on Bluetooth, like a mouse or whatever. What this does is this basically is just it emulates a controller, plug it in over USB C, and boom. It links up to it just like a quad. And uh, let's see, I've been designing a case for him for it uh, and a couple other 3D prints. So it's gonna go in a case like this. You kind of melt the pins over, just a friction fit top. And there you go, you have your house, FPV, ELRS controller, and then there's also one for a Pico Pi. The difference between the two is the, uh, the 20, 2040 board's a bit more expensive than the Pico Pi by, uh, oh, quite a large bit but as you can see the pico pie is a lot bigger so uh still working on that um i'll put a link to it yeah house is awesome he is uh yeah he's awesome uh he's been a little little swamped lately with the addition to his family uh let's see where the heck is it back through my chat history with him. Uh, yeah, and uh, House is also the one that kind of gave me good direction to go in for uh, this LED wall project stuff. Where is it at? Oh, there it is. And here is a link to this project. If you want to see what it is, he's got going on over there. But um, yeah, I haven't pushed the STLs to his GitHub yet, but they will be there uh, along with spacers and uh, I'll do it uh, an instructional assembly, assembly video. <laughs> uh, yeah, I got him. I think I got him beat. 
I don't know. It's up to you guys. You guys make the you guys make the, uh, the decision there. Um, and then after JB will be uh, Aaron Ciotti. If you want to continue the FPV freight train, Ciotti FPV, uh, one of the one of the really good guys in the hobby. Um, definitely, if you don't if you haven't watched his live streams, it's there's some shenanigans on there. He'll swear at you. He'll threaten you about it. Threaten you with bodily harm. Uh, he does giveaways, and uh, if you're looking for anything micro, like three inch and under uh, information, he's the guy with the info. He's done it all, and he's very uh, opinionated and wise as far as micro stuff goes. Anyways, I'm going to get out of here. It's 11.58. Thank you all for coming out today and uh, supporting the craziness over here. Um, if you're interested in the house boards, Hit up the House FUV GitHub. Uh, if you're interested in the Express LRS uh, X Lite Pro mod, go to tweetfv.com uh, or hit me up on Discord. Anybody who's won today, hit me up on Discord. That's the easiest way to get a hold of me. And we'll see you all next week. Thanks for coming out. And as always, guys, stay positive. I love this thing. I, I need to have just a camera for that. Yeah, don't I? Yeah. All right, we'll see you next time. Have, have a good one. Yeah.